Give me all your raw impressions, your thoughts, your work, your time, all of my communication. Yes, speak your mind. Give me all your raw impressions, all your raw impressions. Welcome to Raw Impressions, the freeform podcast featuring Adele Marlowe and Lou Marlowe. <laughs> Lou I Marlowe, an old, old indie rock guy. What? Excuse oh, me. Oh, I'll say I, I love that we landed on freeform podcast. That just feels so right. <clears throat> I was just about to cloud it up with a lot of details about me. Oh, don't cloud it up. Talk about you. My name is Lou Barlow. I am a <laughs> veteran musician. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Veteran? Sure. Uh, I've been playing indie rock for the last... I've been playing music. Why Why? Why cloud it further with these titles, these genres? Genres? I just play music. Mm. I'm currently in the bosom of Philadelphia, downtown <laughs> Philadelphia. Played some of my first um, shows with Subido down here. In a place called the Kyber Pass. I don't know where it is. Is it close by? It could be. A lot of one-way streets down here. Mm. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, my mom's childhood home, Philadelphia. Your mom's childhood home. Mm-hmm. Um, where she grew up. Yeah. My grandparents lived here in the latter part of their lives. Here in Philadelphia, I came. I visited here quite a bit when I was young. I was here in 1976. Mm. What a year for Philadelphia! Oh God! Yesterday, I got up from the bus. We had to. We were parked in a parking lot outside of an enorma dome. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's a collection of three enorma domes just outside the city here. Really? You got your you got your baseball stadium, you got your football stadium, and then you got your Hockey stadium. Your so arena. they just put them all like in a row, huh? Yeah. So I had to make huh. it from the parking lot mm-hmm. um, to the hotel yesterday via an Uber. How'd that but go? But I was getting up and I'm like, geez, should I wear my sweater outside? So I looked at my phone to check what the degrees was there in Philadelphia. 76 degrees. Hot. I mean, nice. That's great. Nice. 76. <laughs> Cool. Philadelphia 76ers. I don't oh. know what they play. Are they a Die. hockey team? Don't tell anybody. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They really like their sports teams here in Philadelphia. Do they? Oh. Yes. Oh, like wait. maniacally so. Wait, wait, wait. They, Is that where Jason Kelsey lives and plays? The Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles. Ah, okay. Yeah, the, the stadium where the Eagles play is... Anyway, they're all in this little cluster. <laughs> Things I um, never knew before Taylor Swift started dating a football player. <laughs> now I know where her future brother-in-law lives and works. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's not that's, that's not weird at all. But Are they engaged? Yeah. I was joking. It's my... Oh, okay. It's her Jeez. boyfriend. Tra- Take it easy. Not Jason. No Travis. Don't put that kind of pressure on her. It's, a, you know... I'm not putting pressure... Hey, I am not putting pressure on her. <laughs> She's a free woman. She can do what she wants. Her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, Kelsey's brother, Jason. He seems pretty funny. He does seem funny. It's true. It's cute. It's cute. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
Can I tell you what I was thinking about last night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so last night, I, I've had a very indulgent week. I feel like it's been very indulgent for me. I don't usually get to go out very much. And I've had uh, two really fun nights this week of shows. Tuesday night, we got to have our really nice date night in Boston. And I got to see the whole Weezer, Flaming Lips, Dinosaur Jr., TD Garden thing. It was very nice. Um, it was really cool. We felt like teenagers on a date. It was so funny. <laughs> I was like kissing in the audience. I'm like, I'm on a date. <laughs> My husband. Anyway, it was funny. But um, and then last night, our friend uh, Ben Bridwell and friend of the pod, Ben Bridwell, you might know from past One episode of our first and only i think guests. our first he's he's like he's the og we love him and uh we'll just keep we him as our only one we don't <laughs> we've only interviewed like what three or four people three or four podcast. people we're very selective guys um anyway he and his lovely band of horses graced deerfield massachusetts treehouse brewery last night which is a really fun venue. And, you know, I got to say, living here in Western Mass, I'm really grateful to have something so close to our house. And it's just also nice. It's a nice spot, nice big bathrooms, walking around. It's a cool old building. And anyway, this is not what I was thinking about. But so I was at the Band of Horses show last night with Liz, our friend, and uh Got to visit with our friends, the band, last night, a little bit before the show. Wait, did they and play indoors or outdoors? They played outdoors, yeah. Yeah, they, okay. They played outdoors on the stage, and they moved the stage, by the way. It's interesting. It's a different... Yeah, they moved it to a different angle. Yep. Yeah, it's a different angle. I'm not sure if I love that new angle, but it, anyway, that's not here, here nor there right now, but uh, so... We're in the audience and, and Liz and I just went kind of almost like right up front, middle front to watch. And the crowd was really nice. It was a really interesting crowd. And um, as they were playing, Liz turned and said to me, wow, look at how many people they're making so happy right now. Oh. I know. And, oh, oh, gosh. You're going to cry? <laughs> You're going to cry? No. Not at all. What the um, fuck? And the moon was showing, the, the the stars were twinkling and I looked around and I saw all these like people like looking at the stage with almost this like healing smile on their faces where they were just like this is so good for me. Like they were all having their own individual moments yet collectively of like, this is really, it was meaningful to them and they did look happy. The audience looked really happy. And, and I thought, wow, she's right. They are making so many people so happy right now. And then I thought, Oh gosh. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. But I was thinking about music and how, you know, being on the other end of it when you're home and your partner's gone because they play music and they're on tour for a long time and you really miss them. Sometimes you can just focus on like, oh, it's really hard. Touring is so hard and I really miss my partner, all that stuff. And then it was really nice to like be in the audience last night and go like, you know, there's a reason why we do this, right? Yeah. I mean, like, look at all these people having this moment, this, this, this time out of their life to feel so happy and art and music. It's just such a gift. And yeah, I feel that pretty uh, yeah. intensely with the, the Weezer thing. Cause you're, you're in the midst of 20,000 people yeah, who are all having a moment. They're having and a who moment. have like where this music has, I mean, Weezer has been around long enough that their lives have been kind of, um, you know, so influenced and buoyed up by this band. And uh, yeah, you really experience it. And the Flaming Lips have a way of really driving that home. Totally. 
Wayne uh, tells a story, or doesn't really tell a story, but he reads a letter every night about a, a fan of theirs whose mother died in a car crash and how music is sort of how important it is. He says something really like, music is a motherfucker. The way it heals or something like that. But, mm. but yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot too because, yeah, you know, sometimes it's like, I guess for me, because, you know, I don't, I don't play to like 20,000 people when I play, when I do my own thing, like generally it's like, you know, between like 30, maybe a hundred people at the shows, like the last tour that John Davis and I did. And um, yeah, you know, it's like, sometimes you can get kind of hung up on numbers and you can get hung up on, you know, is it, is it enough? Will it be enough? What is this? You know, but when you see like how transformative just basically music is, it kind of puts things in perspective in a really cool way. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I like, I'm really fortunate that, that I can experience these extremes, you know, just even as a spectator. Like, I feel like on this tour with Weezer, I feel kind of like a spectator. Like we do play, you know, Dinosaur Jr. certainly have our place in the show mm -hmm. and we play our 25 minutes and we play our, you know, six songs and uh it's super cool um mm -hmm. but you know ultimately those shows are really about weezer and the flaming lips and um they both are very both bands really treasure their audience really are very attuned to their audience and then um it's cool to see that actually like their crews like the people that work for them kind of have that vibe too and it's pretty nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a moment for me last night to be on that end. And, um, and I thought, would I like my husband home full time? Of course. But, you know, in that moment, I was like, I guess this is kind of like the sacrifice, you know, we make is that when you are putting your art into the world and giving that to people um, in that direct way, because it is different, you know, really standing there and getting that feeling of the music live. It is so unique. And, and I, and I just think, yeah, go people go see live music, get out of your house. Don't just say like, Oh, I can't go out at night anymore. I'm too tired. You know what? Fucking just, go out once in a while and support these bands and go and see the live music because they are sacrificing times with their family and their loved ones to bring that directly to you, you know, and so you can experience it in person. And when you do get to experience it in person, it's meaningful, you know? Yeah. So that was my, my thought last night. So <laughs> Well, it's very similar, like I said, very similar to what I've been thinking about while I watch Weezer mm -hmm. at night. I'm not thinking about how I feel after I play a show, you know, or we do our thing. And I don't know, I'm like having the opportunity to play to so many people at once, you know, it's like, I think about, I think about like the one kid, you know, I think about the one yeah. 13, 14 year old kid who sees Dinosaur Jr. and goes like, whoa. What is that? <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> like, whoa, what is this? Because we're, we're really, you know, we're playing like, a, we're playing like we're in our 20s when we open these shows. Like we, it, it is I such love a, it. it's mm -hmm. such a funny flashback to like feeling like, uh, you know, underdogs, you know, mm. and feeling, uh, I don't know, it feels real similar to like back in the day when we used to open, we had, we did a, we did a tour once where we opened up for this band called the gun club. We're quite famous in Europe and we were opening for them and we just, boy, we just brought every, you know, we had like, again, like, you know, half hour to play and just brought the brunt of what we did full energy. And, uh, you know, it changed our whole, it changed our lives because, people did react to us when they saw us play, you yes. know, and they were like, Whoa, what was that? Yes. What's that storm that just blew through, you know, and then right. 
uh, you know, gun club would play and they're you know, much more, I would say their performances were more nuanced, I would say, you know, at least you know, they had a very charismatic lead singer and, and, uh, but we, I don't know, man, it's cool to just feel like a punk band again. <laughs> I, you guys are playing literally like you're in your early twenties and at TD garden, you, you were like, you like knocked over your mic stand. It was so funny. I mean, and, and, and Tomas was standing next to me when it happened and we both just went, oh, and we started laughing whoa, and then whoa. it was so great. Well, and then Tomas that. and I just kind of like, almost like hugged. Cause we were like, this is great. Like what a moment. It was so funny. Oh, I mean, it wasn't, it, it was, was just, just a, like, um, we don't have a whole lot. We have, we have about, I have about three feet, you know, to the lip of the stage because you know, there's three bands. So yeah, these are, of course have this huge setup and then Fleming lips also. So, we're yeah. sort of pushed forward, which I really like. I like it's this It's really idea. cute. I'm, it's pretty funny. <laughs> like us just being at the very lip of this, of this enormous yeah. stage, you yeah. know, with our amplifiers directly behind us, which is, uh, and because it's we- kind of young again, isn't it? Uh, it? And we play the way we play. Like we don't, like bands these days, like generally use in-ear monitors, which means that mm -hmm. the, the music is being, you know, applied directly to their eardrums. And uh, amplifiers have been kind of, they're being, they're in the process of being outmoded, I would say, like amplifiers, as far as something mm -hmm. that you need in a live performance, you know, these things, that, because they are just, they create, they create uncontrollable frequencies for sound mints, like engineers and everything really uh, is about controlling things, you know, like technology controlling all of these um all of these things, the frequencies that fly everywhere, but we we're still doing exactly what we did when we were kids, which is like the amplifiers are blowing forward <laughs> and everything must be adjusted around them. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jay is like uh, particularly unapologetic about what he needs when he plays. Like I need, you know, he needs this incredible firepower and behind him. And then also he puts his, his, uh, vocal microphone directly in front of those speakers, which is just like <laughs> creates, um, you know, cause when he moves his head away from his microphone, it just all the guitar goes through that. So it's all of this, uh, all of these uncontrollable things. And we really are kind of the last in a breed of bands that perform that way, mm -hmm. you know, and we, and Truly. the cool thing is we have a, our sound engineer, Noel is, uh, he's a bit older than us and he grew up going to, you know, arena shows by like huge classic rock bands. And mm -hmm. so he knows that that's his, like, that's his experiences. These is what we think of when we think of like Jimi Hendrix and cream and these bands, you know, that we're playing just like we're playing where they were not relying on PAs and technology to sort of fine tune their music. It was yeah. just this raw, like, and, uh, <laughs> And we do that and it does like, it feels really good to play that way because I, because I feel what I feel is just like the hit off of Murph's drums. I feel like the physical push of my amplifiers. You know, I hear like Jay's solo soaring in just, I mean, I, I, what I experience as the bass player in Dinosaur Jr. is like pretty awesome. It feels really, you know, and it, it scratches that little spot in my brain that when I was young, you know, when I was super young and uh, when you would see like footage of Woodstock, mm. you know, this exciting, you know, like what is, you know, these, this sort of, and uh, that imprinted on me so heavily, you know? Yes. And, <laughs> and it's still scratch. And what we do scratches that little spot in my brain. Yes. That's so cool. So when it I when, so when I play, cool. I just look for the kids, you know, I look for somebody who's like connecting because there are definitely people that at a show like that with, you know, they do like the Weezer fans and the Flaming Lips fans will definitely like put themselves right up front and they will they will endure whatever comes before the band that they're waiting for. I mean, this is a mm -hmm. big thing. I've seen it many times. You know, we've opened for the yep. Foo Fighters and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and you just see people just sort of yeah. Enduring, you know, not, yeah. not being, you know, taste, I mean, yeah, you know, not intolerant for right. sure, you know, but they, but yep. they definitely, I mean, it's not like it would be in the seventies where they would literally throw shit at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just great stories yeah. of, 
you know, what it would be like for the Ramones to open up for Blue Oyster Cult in the late 70s. But um, nothing like that. People are very uh, tolerant of us, but you see them enduring it and you see them going like they're waiting for that magic moment when they get to be close to the band that's, you know, changed their lives, that, that has been the soundtrack for their lives, that that is part of their identity. Like people, you really mm -hmm. see also with something on that scale, on the Weezer scale, you see how it is like, it is a part of people's identity, yes. you know, the bands they like. And it's nice to see that that's still, you know, it, it always will actually, it'll, it'll always exist in some form or another. Things change quite a bit, but um, the good thing is Dinosaur Jr. has never changed. <laughs> <laughs> good old We've reliable. Never old reliable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's sweet mm. that you had that kind of, I, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was it was kind of a powerful moment because just being there under the stars and the moon and um, feeling this just individual joy and seeing all the other people's faces. It just I will say the faces on the audience last night, uh, it was it was kind of profound. There was a wow. Yeah, and it was neat that Liz like noticed that and named it and shared it and um she's a very aware person and good friend of ours and so it was just it was fun to experience it with her and for her to like see that and um yeah, and you know I think that I still have my favorite moments from seeing bands right and those are all things that i cherish and they go in my little memory box and um you know seeing a certain painting for the first time or you know seeing mm. a you know a song played for you know live for the first time those are like all in my little in my little memory box and i cherish them those moments so well i, I didn't expect that we would get profound <laughs> for this I, one because I'm, I'm, I'm sort of I like either yeah you know, my mind is a little it's not blank but I think what you're saying in order for me to articulate it um I would have to I would just have to start talking for like the next 25 minutes until I arrived <laughs> at something that like a cohesive statement about it because I I'd st I, when I try to describe what music means to me and what it continues to mean to me I just immediately start stumbling over my words and saying like a lot. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I had, I had made one, one note for this, uh, this episode that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Was that I've, I'm increasingly aware where in, a, in the last week, there's been two instances when I've woken up and, you know, I do my breathing when I wake up, uh -huh. I've noticed that my face smells. My oh face. Um, well, just like something that I wouldn't want someone to smell on me, <laughs> okay. you know, not, um, not shit per se, but it is hard to smell your own shit. So there is that, but more of like a musty sort of spitty, like dried spit. So I realized maybe when I wake up in the morning that there's a accumulated, so like old saliva on my face. So I was smelling my old saliva. And then I'm, when, I was also just like noticing mm -hmm. my, I'm like, maybe this is why. See, now that I have my, my gold chain mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. uh, maybe I should consider like maybe now's the time for cologne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you're just, you're talking you know, like about where you, it. Where you create, maybe that's the point. It's like you create this sort of cloud around yourself <laughs> with your cologne to mask the smell so of can't aging. Can't you just wash your face? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's other solutions. I, I mean, you can. I could. I was like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to give my face a good scrub because mm -hmm. I did take a shower last night and I'm, I've been showering regularly, but I don't always soak my head because I don't want to deal with like trying to drag a, like a, a comb through my yeah, head. Yeah, your hair's a my, whole my hair is, It's yeah. kind of a thing because then mm -hmm. I have to, then I pull out a lot of hair. 
Mm-hmm. And then I feel a little bad for the people who have to, I feel really bad for the people who have to come in after mm-hmm. me into mm-hmm. these rooms. Because, yeah, yeah. Because we have a good tip. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I usually <laughs> when I when I have these kind of days, like a day in a hotel room, I bring fish from the bus. I bring canned fish. I bring salmon. I eat a lot of fish. So and there's a lot why of like, you stink. So there's a lot of like can, <laughs> like I have right now. There's an opened somewhat empty uh, can of, of salmon. There's also yeah. a, a packet of salmon, like a plastic where the, so there's a, there's salmon. Uh-huh. And then there's me as an aging, uh, you know, I mean, because you're not around, right? It's, it's hard to really keep my, uh, my hygiene game okay. so when I'm alone. It's falling so behind anyway, a little bit. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so I do, I, I think I'm going to leave a good tip. Yeah, great. This time around. Please do. Um, I mean, I, I always try to. That's been a mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. big thing. So that's all I had <laughs> to bring. Can I give you a little bit of the episode? <laughs> I, besides the, the, you know, the power of music and the, oh. yeah, I didn't 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 think of that. Mm. So I'm sorry to surprise you. I just really wanted to share that uh, that sentiment with you that I had that nice moment and um, wanted to share it. But wash your face, hun. Get a nice little totally light, gentle face wash. Go get yourself totally like a Neutrogena or something at CVS. I know. I was like, <laughs> there's an Aveda close by. Do I let's, go there? Let's, let's cologne shop for you together, though. I want to be there because I have oh, to yeah. smell it on your flesh. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw so, someone in our traveling party, I won't, um, was actually using cologne. We could talk more about that. Oh, I'll have to sniff around to I was see like, if I can well, figure it out. I just think out. it seems like a young I have people. guesses. I have guesses. But I was like, Whoa. I have a guess. Okay. Because hmm. I've never, you know. But I know that this, this, this gold chain. Adele gave me a gold chain for. I did. For my birthday that I've been wearing. Because she. It. She owns me. <laughs> well, you know, like to quote Taylor, <laughs> I wear this, I wear your necklace not because he owns me but because he knows me <laughs> i know you baby i kind of like being owned too okay i own you then <laughs> <laughs> give me all your raw impressions give me all your raw impressions Talk, 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 talk Talk, talk, talk to me Talk, 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 talk Talk, talk, talk to me Please Raw Impressions